What do church leaders really need? You know, I've been watching a lot of uh, videos about what a church truly needs, what a leader needs to do, anywhere from what businesses say to what uh, business coaches will tell you to what conferences and the latest trends will say. And if you really start reading all of those things, you will mostly hear one or two things that you need a clear vision, that you need, maybe the second thing, better systems. Are you kidding me? Who in their right mind today, in the 21st century, in 2015, as a leader or a pastor, doesn't already know that? Let me just say it straight. If you as a pastor or leader doesn't already know what your vision or your simple structure is for your church, you need to go to YouTube and just simply spend like a whole day binge watching how to put together a vision statement. It's not rocket science. And I would guess that most of you already have that. That's not your problem. You know what the problem really is? It's not dealing with vision or how to put together teams or how to you know clarify things it's not even dealing so much with budget anymore i mean don't get me wrong i know it's still a problem for many people but i am convinced that the number one problem and a need that most church leaders have is simple and yet it's so complicated it really deals with how to help our people recover. It really deals with the emotional intelligence, maybe some would say, of our people. You know, without a doubt, what's happened in the last maybe 10 years is that our society has become what I wanna say, what I wanna call emotionally constipated. I know that sounds really weird, it almost sounds bad. But it seems like our society and our churches are filled with people that have way too much knowledge and not the tools to actually sift through all of those things, all of those voices, and live lives of purpose and lives of kindness and lives of unity and harmony with their families, with each other, with their own past, with their neighbors, with themselves. So in my mind, what church leaders need more than anything is not more vision, more clarity, more organization, more of that stuff. I'm not saying it's not important, but I would guess that most of us already have that. What we need is help on how to actually help our people grow. I know that there are many other things out there. How do we reach millennials? How do we become more missional? The art of neighboring. How do we become better neighbors? But you know, here's the reality. What are you going to do once you actually meet your neighbor? And you realize that they're dealing with domestic violence, with uh, schizophrenia, with fear, anxiety, depression, or uh, uh, issues in their childhood of molestation and, and difficulties with shame and guilt. <laughs> it's it's got to go beyond the art of being a good neighbor. It's no longer the season of bringing cookies to your favorite new person on the block. When you knock on that door, if they even open the door, if they don't think that you're either selling someone something or trying to save them from some sin or that you're a, a strange person who is out to maybe do something bad, if they even open their door, what are you going to actually offer them? Obviously, we want to offer them God, Jesus, redemption, salvation. Obviously, that's what we all want. Obviously, we have, again, a vision or a structure. We have a Sunday morning. We have great kids programs. We have a great outreach ministry. We have, you know, a wonderful Mother's Day celebration and a great summer camp. Yes, you know what? Everybody has that. What our neighbors, what the people in our churches need is what Jesus constantly reminds us of, and that's freedom. And I would call it 
emotional freedom. It could be freedom from mental health issues. It could be freedom from, from relational and marriage hangups. It could be freedom from addictions and from, uh, and from alcoholism and domestic violence. It could be freedom from guilt and shame. Do you know how much guilt and shame drives our culture? It's what our news, it's what Facebook, it's what Twitter, it's what Instagram constantly reminds us of. How terrible we are, how unpopular we are. We are being bullied by social media. It's the new bullying of the 21st century. It's called Facebook. And those are the people that sit in your pews every day. It's not a greater vision. It's not better teams. <laughs> it's not uh, you know, more activities that we need. It's how do we as leaders and therefore as, as people, and especially in the church, have the emotional and social intelligence and, and joy to really help people in our lives. That's really what it's about. You know, how many times have you met someone that is on the outside just very put together? Their makeup is awesome, their hair, their family looks, looks great on a Sunday morning, but truly what's going on inside is our issues of anger and sexual addiction. How many times do you find that Sunday mornings maybe are packed or going well and that things seem to be growing and happening, but truly it is your Celebrate Recovery ministry where true passion and true transformation is taking place. That's what I dream of. That's what I see as the future of the church. The topics that we all face today are issues of unity. How do we become racially reconciled? It's not just enough to have a multicultural church or a multi-ethnic church, or how do we reach out to Latinos, or how do we become more sensitive to Asian Americans or African Americans, or how do you know, white uh, hipster young churches become more socially just? It's not just about that. that. That is normal. Again, if you don't know what this is about, just go to your favorite conference, you know, your mega conference and buy all the books. You'll learn all about it. What it truly comes down to is how do we reconcile as humans? How do we actually become one in a family? How do we become, how do we resolve conflict? How do we put ourselves in somebody else's shoes so that we understand what it's like to raise a teenage African-American son here in our city? That's the desire of my heart. That's the passion that God has given me. Not from some sort of like, you know, amazing expertise, but truly from a heart of compassion and of desire to help you in these specific areas. So I've put together this uh, church consulting markers, the seven markers for maximum kingdom impact that as a church consultant and as a joy coach, I want to share with you. And I hope that you will realize that beyond all the systems and beyond all of the books on leadership and and I've taken all those courses and my program that I'm in on uh, global leadership has taught me a lot. But I'm telling you that beyond all of that, I want to be an encourager to you as a pastor, as a leader. I want to be able to be someone who you can just bounce things off of. And then from the 20 plus years of ministry experience in different denominations, from from main, um, ma mainstream churches to uh, small churches to evangelical to non uh, to liturgical, non-liturgical, from big to medium to small, all of that, plus the training, plus school, plus seminary, plus just really what I believe God has given me as a passion and a skill, I hope that I can be a mentor and a coach to you. And really my number one prayer for you is that you will increase 
enjoy. That you will have a sense of, of purpose and of hope as a leader. I hope that you will never give up. That your courage will only increase as a church leader, as a volunteer, as a staff member. And that you will consider sitting down with me and just talking about your particular need. And if you can relate to some of the things that I'm saying, you know, there are many church consultants out there that will do many other things. But if you relate to my message and to really what God has put in my heart, then I hope that we can talk and that we can build trust and that we can become people of joy. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Hey, this is Trig. Did you like this episode? There are three things that you can do to make sure that you stay on track with Gosa Living and with this message of joy. First, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe so that you can every week get a notification so that you know when these videos are ready for you to enjoy. Second, go to my website and sign up for the free article that I wrote for Leadership Journal called High Anxiety, How Anxiety No Longer Defines Me. And then third, also on my website, sign up to get my free newsletter that comes out every week that has funny jokes to give us joy, that has some of the content on conferences and articles that I'm writing that are not in this channel. You can click on the subscribe button right here on this video. Go to my website, check it out. Most of all, I am so proud of you. I am with you. I am cheering you on. I am thankful for what you're doing to live a life of joy, adventure, overcoming crisis, and discovering who you love. Thanks so much for watching. Your ghost of friend. I will see you next time.